this week on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to continue updating our 30-year-old barn find. Some more sanding, some more painting, and because we want to use larger tires and wheels, we're going to make some trailer modifications. Plus, we're going to flip it over, knock off the rust, and begin uh, applying an undercoating for the bottom of the trailer. This week on El Cara Ham Radio. Well, as mentioned during the introduction, we wanted to begin to finalize some of the sanding here on the deck as we saw and begin painting the deck. So we went to our favorite box store here locally and got some elephant gray patio and porch paint. Now this has got some grit in it as well so that uh, it won't uh, be slippery once it is wet. Ultimately, once this is painted and we have the trailer exactly the way we want it, we're going to start laying out equipment and then creating silhouettes on this deck so that things will go in its proper place, mainly for weight distribution. But you can see we've got that first coat of paint applied on the deck, and then we actually had to get some more paint. That was some decking paint that we had from an earlier project, and it was actually a little bit lighter color, but it still worked out just fine. We also began to finalize some of the sanding on the side panels, and we can see KK4JPX uh, sanding parts of the side panels to give us a much smoother surface. Again, a lot of this wood, uh, or all of this wood, was uh, added to the trailer by AC4DM when he bought the trailer. There was no panels on it originally, but we needed to get a nice smooth surface that uh, wasn't 30 years old, both on the paint side and wood. So we are putting the first coat of paint on these panels. Elkara Blue is what we like to call it. And you can see down here on the deck, we've got some of the panels already with that first coat on at least one side. And uh, we painted both sides and with one coat. So in a future video, we'll be finalizing the painting on these panels so that we have two coats of paint. Now, our original thought was we wanted to put some 14-inch tires on the trailer, and the original tires are only 12 inches. So to make room for these much larger tires and wheels, we thought, well, let's remove these fenders. And then AC4DM got to thinking about it, and this was really not the best way to go about this. So we're going to switch and start utilizing a, a jigsaw here to uh, cut out not only the fender, but some of the metal bracketing because the wheel and tire is just going to be too large. It wouldn't have fit in that space anyway. And this was a lot faster than using that grinding wheel. So a uh, little jigsaw and we were able to remove both the fender and a little bit of the metal. Now we weren't done with the uh, metal piece here. As we'll see, we'll be sizing those a little bit more consistently, but we wanted to get the fenders off. Now you can see the 12 inch tire. It's a really tiny tire. It would have worked for not a lot of weight, um, but they were older, and we thought, you know, this trailer would look a whole lot spiffier if we had bigger 14-inch tires and wheels. So uh, we went to our local tractor supply and picked up a couple of tires and wheels. So AC4DM gets out his impact drill, and we start removing those lugs uh, on the uh, current 12-inch tire and wheel mainly the wheel here, so that we can actually put on the new ones. And we also wanted to see what spacing we would have uh, where the fender used to be and the metal brackets themselves. We got out a floor jack, raised it up, and uh, finalized the removal of the old tire and wheel. So out goes the old. In comes the new. You can see it's quite a bit larger, and this will allow us to carry more on the trailer as well. So it's just a matter of installing one and kind of getting a, an idea of how large it is in relation to the space that it is occupying, as well as the brackets on both the front and back side of the tire. Alrighty, so one tire and wheel is on. We just need to tighten it down and uh, Again, just kind of look it over and make sure that it's going to fit within the space. And as we noticed, we needed to make a, a couple of more adjustments. The uh, the uh, fender uh, 
brackets needed to be sized a little bit more consistently. So we took our um, jigsaw and we actually enlarged the spaces on either side. Now, this is on the other side of the trailer. We're moving the fender over on this side as well as well as taking a little bit of the metal off of the bracket that was holding the fender. So again, we would have enough space and then we'll come back and clean those uh, areas up to make them again more consistent on uh, the front and back side. Once again, we uh, take the impact drill or uh, wrench, if you will, and we remove the lugs to get the old tire and wheel off of the trailer. And then once we have the lugs off, we can just pull that off and then install the brand new tire and wheel. So there's AC4DM just giving it a spin. We've got the new one on there. And next we need to come along and just clean up a little bit on those brackets. We uh, AC4DM has a spare set of fenders, of course, uh, that we can install. We also noticed that one of the leaf springs seemed to be out of alignment. And so we're going to be working to uh, uh, make an adjustment there. So here we're actually measuring uh, the bracket so that we have about an inch um, and we need to remove just to remove a little more metal there so that the tire uh, has some travel and won't, uh, won't actually hit that bracket. Out comes the trusty jigsaw and uh, again just removing a little bit more metal here on the bracket face Ultimately, a new fender is going to be welded onto these brackets, but again, we don't need a whole lot of metal there. In fact, the bracket that's there was overkill for the fenders that were there, but uh, probably when these trailers were built, uh, they were built to different sizes and possibly even different wheel sizes, and so they use the same bracket for everything. So we're just removing a little bit of material. All righty, finishing up on making that a little bit cleaner, and we need to do this on the front and back on both sides. So we're just finishing up a little bit of material removal. Now, you might wonder, where do we go from here? Well, we've got new wheels and tires. One of the things that we noticed on the underside of the trailer was quite a bit of rust. So uh, AC4DM has a hoist over in one of his larger barns. So we actually hoisted the trailer up from one side to get it up in the air so that we could flip it up on its side like you see and we could take some grinding uh, wheels and uh, some brushes and knock off that surface rust and that's all it is it's just some surface rust it was not going into the metal in any depth to speak of but we also wanted to paint the underside to give it a nice coating to protect it for the future so we are just knocking off the rust these uh, brass uh, brass based brushes work uh, wonderfully and then with your uh, power tool, battery operated power tools here, you can knock off that rust. And this took, um, I don't know, about an hour, hour and a half, just kind of getting in. You can't get into every nook and cranny with this brush, so we then had to come along with sanding blocks to get into some of the areas the brush couldn't reach. But the brush could get about 80, 85% of a lot of this surface rust to make for a better surface for new paint. So we're knocking off the rust in preparation for some black paint that we're going to add not only to the wood on the underside, but also to the frame itself so that we don't have to worry about additional rust. And see, uh, as we see here, AC4DM is starting to apply that coat of paint on the underside so that it'll look uh, even nice underneath and mainly for protection. There were three or four of us this day working on the underside of the trailer. And, you know, when you have this many people working on these projects in your club, it shortens these projects uh, quite a bit so you can get done much, much quicker. And then the asset is something that you can use very uh, quickly. And we're looking forward to using this trailer with the upcoming field day here, June 2021. We're about three weeks out. So hopefully we can have the trailer uh, in a workable state uh, for the upcoming field day to carry antennas, generators and fuel. So just a beauty shot here of the underside uh, with its coating of paint. Uh, we still have to make a couple of adjustments to the leaf springs, but other than that, we're making great progress. Coming up, 
In part three, we're going to add an additional coat of paint to the panels, and we're potentially going to be working on those fenders and some hoops that will allow us to apply a canvas like a Conestoga wagon. 73.